Hello, my name is Reese Hunter, but on social media I'm currently known as Fishy. I might change in the future, might not, I don't know. I'm an NFT artist, so I know that there are a lot of challenges that you have to get through just to publish your first NFT. One of the biggest challenges, in my opinion, is making a website where people can mint your NFTs. Now, the reason you might need a website like this is because minting NFTs can be really expensive. It's much cheaper on the Solana network, which is what we'll be dealing with today, but even that gets pricey when you're minting upwards of a thousand NFTs. So with this website that we'll be creating today, you won't need to pay any minting fees because your customers are going to do all of that for you. I also want to let you guys know that I am an NFT artist, like I said before, and I will be releasing my very first collection very soon. If you have any interest in that at all, I'm going to leave the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord server in the description of this video, so you can stay up to date with my work and maybe grab a couple NFTs when I release my first collection. Okay, that's enough talk, now let's get into how to create an NFT minting website. Alright, let's get right into it. So the first thing you need to do is actually download Visual Studio Code. This is what we'll be using to build and edit all the files that we're going to need. So go ahead and download that for whatever platform you're using. And then the second thing you're going to need is Phantom. This is a wallet and it works as a Chrome extension. So all you have to do is add to Chrome, add extension, wait a little bit, and it'll take you to this page where you can create a new wallet. Then you just need to make a password and that's literally it. So now if you go here, you can see your Phantom wallet is right here. So now that you've done that, what we're going to do is go to our desktop or wherever you want these files to be saved and make a new folder and call it whatever you want. Now what you need to do is open Visual Studio Code, go to File, Open, and select the folder you just created. So mine is called YouTube. And now you'll have a screen like this. Obviously the folder is empty right now, but it won't always be that way. So now go to Terminal, New Terminal. And this is where we will type in all the commands for this project. So now you're going to want to navigate over to the Metaplex GitHub page, click code and copy this link. And then we're going to go into our project in the terminal that we just opened. You can type git clone and then paste the link in here. And as you can see now, it is cloning an exact copy of the project on this GitHub page. So now you can see here all of the files that we just cloned. Now that we've done that, we're going to have to use the cd command to change directory so we can navigate through these folders. So we're going to have to go through Metaplex, and then JS, and then Packages, and then CLI. So you'll do cd Metaplex, cd JS, cd Packages, cd CLI. And now we're going to do yarn install, which will download all the necessary dependencies that we're going to need for this project. Since I ran this previously, it only took me less than a second, but yours might take 10 to 20 minutes. Once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and build the project with the yarn build command. And once that's finished, you're going to do yarn run package mac os. I typed it wrong the first time, this is how it should look. Now that we've built the project, our next step is to install the Metaplex binary and confirm it's on our path. So I'm going to use the cp command, which copies files, and I'm going to do bin mac os metaplex and then space bin our next step is to install the solana command line tools so that we can use it in our project so i'm literally just going to copy this from the website i'll leave the link in the description head over back here paste it in and hit enter once that's done you will probably have this message in that case you can just copy it and then paste it here and now you're done with that to confirm that this worked now we can do solana dash dash version and you can see that we're on Solana CLI version 1.7.12, so it worked. Now that we have the Solana command line installed, we need to make sure we're on the DevNet version of Solana so that we can safely test things. So to do that, just type solana config set dash dash URL, and then HTTPS api.devnet.solana.com. As you can see, our URL is now pointing to DevNet instead of mainnet. Our next step is to generate a new keygen to use with DevNet. So to do that, type solana-keygen, new-outfile, and then type in this exact path. And hit enter. You can leave yours exactly like this, but I need to change the name of mine since I already have one that exists with that name. 
So once you hit enter, it will create that and then you just need to create a password. Confirm it. And there you go. It will now generate a public key for you. So you want to copy and paste that over to a file. I'm just going to make a Google Drive file. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it in here and label it keygen pub key because we're going to need to use this later on. So now we're also going to make the devnet our default key pair. So to do that, we're going to type Solana config set dash dash key pair. And then you're going to type in the same path that you put your key pair at. So yours will look just like this, but without the dash zero one. As you can see, that successfully worked. Now what you need to do is create the folder that we're going to keep all the images for our NFTs in. So go into Metaplex, go into JS, Packages, CLI, and now make a new folder and call it Assets. And enter the Assets folder. Now what I'm going to do is drag my two pictures that I want to turn into NFTs into here. And head back into Visual Code Studio. Now we can see that we have this Assets folder and if we open it, we have our pictures. So now right click the assets folder and make a new file. Notice how the pictures are called 0.png and 1.png. It's important that you start at 0. So now for each picture we're going to need a JSON file. So name this one 0.json and make another one called 1.json. Each NFT you want to create is going to have to have a JSON file associated with it. So now we need to fill in these JSON files. So go to this website and I will leave a link in the description. Scroll down and we're going to copy this entire JSON structure and then paste it in here. So now we need to change everything to fit our needs. So change the name here to what you want the NFT to be named. I'll just name this one fishy001. You can make the description whatever you want the description of the NFT to be when it's posted. And then the seller fee basis points are what your royalties are going to be. So if you want your royalties to be 2.5%, then you'll make this 250. If you want it to be 5%, then you make it 500. If you want it to be 50%, you can make it 5,000. But we're just gonna make it 250. For the image, you're gonna change this to image.png. No matter what your actual associated image is called, you're gonna wanna call this image.png. For animation URL, we can just delete that. And external URL, we can delete that. So now we're getting into some attributes. I'm sure if you're creating NFTs, you know what attributes are. They pretty much tell the buyer how rare the NFT is. So if we look at the actual image that I'm posting here, it has a hat, it has winky eyes, it has its tongue out, and the background is space. So we're gonna add all of those in as attributes. So we're gonna have one called background is space, skin is white, eyes are winking. And then if you run out, you can just copy this and we're gonna have two more. Just remember to put commas in between them. So now the mouth has its tongue out, so we're gonna call it tongue, and the hat is a wizard hat. So now we're done with the attributes. Here you can choose what the collection it's gonna to go to, so we're gonna call this Fantasy Fishies, and the family will be Fantasy Fishies also. So now we're onto files. I'm just gonna select from this comma down and delete it because all we need is this image and we're going to change this to be image.png just like the previous one and then we're going to change category to image so now the creator section this is important if it's just you that is creating the nfts and it's just you that's going to get shares so if we go back to google chrome and we go to phantom we can click right here to copy our wallet address and then go back and paste it in here so now when someone buys your NFT, the money will go into this wallet. And share you wanna leave at 100%, so you get 100% of the money. If you had multiple creators, then you could go like this, copy that, put a comma, paste it, and then put the other guy's address, and then make the shares 50, 50, or whatever you want the split to be. So I'm just gonna delete this since it's only me, and make it 100% all to my wallet. And now that that's done, we can select everything, copy it, and go into one.json and paste it all in. So now what we're going to need to change is the name. So this will be fishy2. Fishy2. We can leave everything else except for the attributes because the attributes for fishy2 are actually different. The background is white. The skin is zombie. It has sad eyes, a normal mouth, and the hat is a crown. So I'm gonna go ahead and change the attributes accordingly. There we go, now all of our JSON files are configured. 
if you have more nfts that you want to publish which you probably do then you can just keep adding more pmgs counting up and more jasons counting up accordingly now you're going to need to double triple and quadruple check that everything here is listed correctly because if it is not and you publish them there is absolutely no going back you need to make sure that this is the correct number again 250 will be 2.5 percent if you accidentally put 2.5 then you're pretty much going to be making absolutely nothing off royalties so you need to make sure this is 250 need to make sure that you're getting 100% of the shares to your wallet if you are the only creator, and you need to make sure all of the attributes are correct. Now that you've double, triple, and quadruple checked everything and it's all looking perfect and everything is working up to this point, now you can actually upload your NFTs to the web. So to do that, you're gonna do metaplex upload dot slash assets dash dash env devnet dash dash key pair and then this path again to your devnet wallet. Hit enter and it will start publishing them. Now that it's uploaded, you will see a .cache folder under CLI. So if you open that and click on the file in there, you will see some weird text. And what this is, is actually all of the data from the uploads. As you can see, there's the name and all the other information, and then we have a link. So if you copy that link and put it in a browser, you'll be taken to this page. As you can see, this is the page that stores all of the data for fishy number 001. So if we go to this image, this is exciting. If you go to the image, it'll actually show you the image for that NFT. And now if we go to the second link, put it in the browser, we will have a similar page, but this one is for the fishy number 002. So if you go to the image for this one, it'll show us the image for our second NFT. Now it's getting exciting. So I'm gonna copy this entire file and I'm gonna paste it into our document where we're storing important information. So now we're gonna go back into Visual Studio Code and what we now need to do is create our candy machine. So first do Solana config get and we're gonna copy our key pair path which we're gonna need for the next command. Now do metaplex create candy machine dash K for key pair, paste your key pair right there and then dash E devnet and then P is where you set the price. I'm gonna set this to 0.5 sol. So if we hit enter, it should create our candy machine. And there we go, our candy machine has been created and here's the public key. So I'm gonna select this, copy it, and paste it into this file where we're keeping all of our important stuff. And I'm gonna name it candy machine pub key. Now we need to set the date that we want our NFTs to be able to start minting. So to do that, do metaplex, update, candy machine and then dash k for key pair we're going to copy it up here again paste it now we're going to do dash d for date and then we're going to do the day so today is the 21st of september 2021 it's 11:56 right now so i'm going to do 11:57:00, and then i'm going to put pst for pacific standard time or you can do gmt or whatever your time zone is so now when I hit enter, it'll do that. Now that it's done, as you can see, the timestamp here is this. So we're gonna copy that and paste it into our important file and call it start date. Now we're gonna need to clone another GitHub repository. This one is gonna be for the UI of our minting website. So once again, go to code and copy the link. Go to your desktop and create another folder. I'm gonna call this one candy machine. Now go back into Visual Studio Code, go to File, Open, and now we're gonna open the Candy Machine folder. Once again, go to Terminal, New Terminal, and now we're gonna do Git, Clone, and then paste in the link. As you can see now, we have this entire project in our Candy Machine folder. Now what we're gonna have to do is head over to the Candy Machine Mint folder, so do CD, Candy, Machine, Mint, and now once again, we're gonna have to do Yarn Install, just like we did with the last project. Once that's done, you can then run yarn build. Once that's finished, we're gonna put this file to use. So go into source, and then there's gonna be a file called .emv.example. We're gonna right click it and rename it. Just remove the example part, so it's just called .env. So now you can see we have some variables with some placeholders. So the first one, react app candy machine config, is going to be this keygen public key. So copy it from here and paste it here. The next one, react app candy machine ID, 
is going to be this candy machine public key. Now react app treasury address is going to be your wallet address. So go into phantom, put in your password if it requires, and then click here to copy your wallet address and paste it in here. Next one is start date, which we have here as the start date. So paste it in there. And then we're done with this file. Also, by the way, since we are using the DevNet for testing purposes, this should be DevNet and so should this. If you are actually publishing your website and you're not testing anything anymore, you can change these to mainnet. So now everything is actually complete for this website. So you can do yarn start to start it up. It will take a minute or two before it actually runs, but once you get this message, you're good to go. So head over to Chrome and open a new tab and type localhost 3000, just like this. And now you can see our website. It shows our address and our balance, and then you can mint NFTs. But right now our wallet is actually on the mainnet, but we need it on DevNet. So open the phantom wallet, click the settings, scroll down, change network, and go over to DevNet. Now refresh the page and this is what you'll see. You'll be able to connect your phantom wallet. And now, as you can see, this shows our balance. Now remember, this is our DevNet balance, so this isn't real soul, but we can use it for our testing purposes. Now, if we click mint, a little pop-up will appear from phantom wallet asking if we want to approve this transaction, which we do. Now we have successfully minted an NFT. You can see our balance has decreased by 0.5, which is the price we set earlier. And now if we go into our phantom wallet and we go into this section, you can see that we have an NFT now, and it is one of the ones that we uploaded. So now that you know how to build the entire framework for this website, all there's left to do for you is to design it and make it look pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope that it helped you out in some way or another. And if it did, maybe consider leaving a like and subscribing. It really helps me out a ton. Before the video ends, I want to remind you guys that I left the links to my Twitter, Instagram, and Discord server in the bio if you want to stay up to date with my artwork. And I will see you guys in another video, hopefully.